Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can animate content inside of InDesign. Yeah, that's right, you can animate stuff inside of InDesign. Crazy, I know. So, naturally with the content I've got in front of me here, I want to fade in the dates for December and I'd also like to make some snowfall in the background of this scene. I'm going to select all the dates, which is the only thing that's selectable at the moment. Everything is locked out of the way. And then I'll have to group them together to treat it as one element. So group in there like so. And then I will then need to go to the window menu, go down to interactive and then choose the animation panel, which pops up on screen. Now, it's not just that I'm dogmatic about naming and labeling everything, but name in here. This really needs to be changed because when you animate several things, there's an order to how things animate and you want to be able to see exactly what the name of the thing is that you are animating in a specific order. So it is worthwhile not leaving these generic names in here. And then with it then active, I can go to the preset menu. Um, if you can just click on the word choose, it will uh, reveal the drop down menu or you have to click on a little triangle here. And then these are all the preset animation types that you get. So you can see here, you hover over and you won't get a preview until you actually click on it in the main animation panel. But um, if, for example, I choose something, you know, kind of subtle, um, like fade in from here, uh, you'll get a very basic preview. If I hover my cursor over the window in there and hover it back in there. So if you want to see the preview, it doesn't pop up at first. Hover your cursor over the window and then hover it back and you will get a preview. So what this is going to do is it's going to just reveal on screen. It's going to fade in over a duration of one second and it's just going to play the animation once. So um, we want to see what that looks like. So you can go down to the bottom left hand side and you can click on uh, preview spread EPUB. So um, this is basically just a preview, which is really, really tiny. Um, and you might see that there on screen, but if you want to make it bigger, you can just hover your cursor over the bottom right corner and drag and you can make that bigger. So if I just set it to about that size, that should be enough move it to the side and then at the moment uh, the icon down here means that I'm just previewing the one page in here um, not every page of the document so just this active page and then click on play and it will just kind of restart the animation again in there so it reloads the page and there we go so it fades in straight away as soon as the page loads up which is good and um, if you want to change that you can go to duration if you tap the up arrow key on here, it will increase the value by 0.25 seconds every time you tap. So if I tap up in there, there we go. If you want it to uh, increase by whole numbers in there, obviously you can type it in, but you can shift and left click on these arrows and it will increase by whole seconds. And then from here, you can go back and you can click on play and you can get another preview of the animation in there. So it's a little bit slow in the preview. Um, it will be quicker if you publish it online and things like that. So there we go. Well, you know, that is how you can create a simple animation inside of InDesign. And then you'll go up to the top right hand side of the screen in here and you choose publish online is the kind of the, the best, most accessible way for people to see that interactive document. So if we wanted then to do something a little bit more complex, then you can animate elements coming in and, and in our case, add some snow in here. What I can then do is, for now, I don't want to see the dates. It's just going to be something I'm going to click on and select by accident. So, uh, noting the layers panel, I've got a layer specifically for dates. I'm going to hide those and then I'm going to click on my layer called Snow. It's positioned here, so it's behind uh, the hills. I've got the foreground in here, which looks like this. I've got the background, which looks like that. And my snow layer is lower down, so the snow will fall behind the horizon in there. That's why the layers are set up the way that they are. Um, that content's all locked, so now I can work in my snow layer. And then if I pick up my zoom tool, I'm going to need to zoom in sort of close to the top edge of my page in here. And then if I go to my ellipse tool, hover over and then just left click over the page, I can then set this to be something like 15 by 15 pixels and then click OK. It gives me a circle. And then if I put a white fill inside of it in there for paper and just move this out of the way. Um, which is fine, you know, but it is going to be a, a very plain white circle. So I would like to fade this a little bit. No, kind of fuzzy snow. Um, you could import something from Adobe Illustrator if you wanted to. If you've got a snowflake design, you can absolutely animate anything that can go on a page inside of InDesign. You can animate. So I'm going to stick simple in here. Um, and then with that active, I will then go up to the effects uh, options at the top and choose gradient feather only to give this a very soft edge around the outside. So by default, Gradient Feather will 
feather it from one side. I want it to change the type from linear to radial and so it'll give me a soft fuzzy edge in there. Just to tweak this a little bit further, I'm going to click on the midpoint and set that to say 75. Hit the tab key to preview. So it's going to keep it black in here is, um, is revealed content and as it fades to white in here, it becomes transparent. So there we get a nice fuzzy edge around the outside. So it's an optional thing, you know, so click OK to that. If I click away, there we go. See, in full preview, I get a nice fuzzy edge. So great. If I select that, I can then go to my animation panel, click on the, um, uh, on the name in here. I'm going to call this Snow 1 and press return. Now, I am going to create a duplicate of this because um, this is going to make life a lot easier because if you're going to experiment with things you want to animate, you do want to create a duplicate of it. So you've got a backup copy somewhere else. Go back to the original, select that, and then you need to really move it to where you want it to finish animating. So if I just change this to view the whole page and then um, hovering over here very carefully. <laughs> yeah. So if I go back in here and just move this down like so down to where I need it, just dropping behind the horizon about here, like so. Great. So it's still selected. Go to my animation panel and then choose uh, from here, preset. The one that seems to make more sense is, is uh, fly in from top in there. So we're going to do that. What InDesign does is it puts it onto what's called an animation path or a motion path. That, uh, you know, first glance in here is this big green dotted line. That is nowhere near long enough. Um, to show you why, um, because when I click on play, it will reboot the preview and then uh, you don't see it because it fades in and it flies down in one second. So first of all, duration in here, we need to change this to say three seconds, press return and then click on play again. And there you go. If you blink, you miss it. So the path isn't long enough. We don't want it to start fading in from here. It's, you know, it's almost all the way down to the landscape in there. So you'll need to modify the motion path. If you want to stick with the exi existing motion path, you have to edit that and you have to do it with the direct selection tool. So if I zoom into this region down here, you'll go back to your direct selection tool and then you'll find you probably have to click on the original shape itself that you're animating and then click on one of the ends in there. Might have to left click again. It's, it's hard to spot, but that is now active. The very top of the motion path in there. Now you can drag that um, here. I can drag it upwards. If I hold down the shift key, it will stop it moving left and right. Or you can just hold down the shift key and the up cursor key and you can keep moving up like so if you want to, but I'm really not a patient person. So I'm going to hover my cursor of that and drag it all the way up to the very top of the page in there. It's a, this is one of the most fiddliest bits about it, really. So from that done, now we've got the, the, in theory, the snowflake coming from the top of the page, going all the way down, and then disappearing behind the horizon. So switch back to my selection tool. You will then have to click on the actual object that you are trying to animate as well. So if I just drag across that, it will select all of the motion path and the element I'm animating. And when you see the name snow one in there or the name of it, then we can then alter the properties. So duration, I really think this needs to be something like um, six, press return. Um, and then if I click on play, what we should get now is a preview of the snowflake falling in like so. So it just drops straight down, but it kind of decelerates, which would kind of think that someone's driving the snowflake, which is no good. So to alter this, if I go um, down to the bottom under opacity in here and um, m uh, speed in here, so speed from preset, this needs to be none. I don't want it to ease out. That's what it's doing at the moment. So as it's finishing the animation, it's slowing down. If I just choose none uh, and then click on play. And there we go. It is just one constant speed in there. It starts at zero opacity and it fades in and disappears behind the hill, but it doesn't loop. So again, in here, you could choose to play the animation however many times you want, or you could just turn on loop. And if I now click on play, the dates don't appear in here because I've hidden the layer. So it's just the snowflake that appears at the moment. So there we go. You know, we have a snowflake that falls from the top down to the bottom. It fades in and, you know, fairly happy with that, you know. Um, but if, if you want something a little bit more interesting, then you're going to have to really make your own path. So I will show you that one next. So there we go. That's how we do that. 
I'm going to click away from that. I'm going to go back up and then I'm going to zoom out touch and I'm going to create my own path. So I'm going to pick up the pen tool over here. I'm going to make the color of the path red so we can see it's nice and clearly. Press return and then start somewhere around about here. I'm going to click and hold the left mouse button down and drag to create a smooth point. Hover somewhere around about here, click and drag. I just want to give this kind of a, a wavy path in here and click and drag down at the bottom there for the third and final anchor point like so. So we get this you know, nice subtle curve. Hit the escape key, switch back to my selection tool and then I need to copy that one. So edit and copy, edit and paste. And then in this case, notice the position of where the pasted snowflake is. If I shift and left click on the motion path that I've just made, when you then go to the animation panel, you can convert that path into what's called a motion path in there. So that's basically just attaching the snowflake onto it. But look at the position of this now when I click on it. Wherever the position of the thing is that you're going to animate, that's where it starts from. So just to bear that in mind. Um, so if I just drag this up here, like so, I'm going to have a snowflake now that starts just off the top. It's going to wave down in there and appear in. So I need to go back and click on the snowflake in there. And what this will do is it's just going to run this along the path inside of it. But what I would like to do is just first of all, change the name in there to snow two. I would like this to start uh, with an opacity of fade in and then duration. Let's go for seven seconds and then loop and then go and click on play. Now watch what happens when we do this, because when it loads up, the first snowflake will appear and it falls gracefully now because we've tweaked the animation. And then the second snowflake appears. Now that's to do with timing. So whenever you animate stuff inside of InDesign, it animates the first thing, it plays that animation through, and then it plays the next thing. So we have to tweak the timing. To go back to the animation panel, go down to the bottom and there is an icon of a stopwatch in there. Click on that and it opens up the timing panel. Notice that we have dates, which faded in, snow one and snow two. So you can change the order of these. The item that's at the top of the list animates first and it works its way down. So if I click on dates, I can click and drag and pull that down. I want the snow to appear first off and then the dates to fade in. So from here, if you want these two snowflakes to animate at the same time, click on the first one, hold down the shift key and shift and left click on the second one and then link the animation to play at the same time or play together, it's called in there like so. And you get this little linking symbol in there. And then again, it will still play the animation from the page load. But if I turn on my dates layer in here and then click on play, what we should get is the snowflakes appearing both together at the same time, working down in here. And then, ta-da, you know, two snowflakes, isn't going to make a blizzard for us. But um, if you want to create more, then from here, you could always just move the timing panel and the animation panel out the way in here. And then I could click on this path. Uh, you have to go make sure you go back up to the top, um, edit, copy, edit, and then paste. And then you get this and you can move it around like so. I would tend to, if you want to make this look like it's a little bit more, you know, uneven snow in it, because not all snow falls at the same time, then vary the duration in there. So you can increase that duration. Um, and then of course, notice in the timing panel that we now have snow two in there. So I do need to name that bad Bradley, uh, snow three. And then you can just drag that into the link animation like so. So they all play at the same time now. And if I go back in here and then click on play, we'll get a preview. So it is really a case of you create one, apply all the man animation to it that you want, and then you can make them um, duplicates, copy and paste them, move them around and arrange them. And that is how you will get your snow falling in the background. And so here is the finished design. Uh, once I'd created a few snowflakes, um, it was then a, a case really of um, altering the timing of them just to make sure that they, they fell at a different rate in there to make them look a little bit more interesting and not too regimented and um and then i took the whole layer of uh, snow and copied and pasted everything so once i got five or six then it was a case of copying and pasting and before i knew it i had 20 25 snowflakes and uh, i also added um a little puff of smoke coming out of the chimney as well uh, using the same kind of technique 
So um, animations inside of InDesign, folks. Um, that's how you can create a basic fade in using just a one element, which was the calendar dates, and then how you can create your own motion paths and animate things with a little bit more control and then time how those animations work in a specific sequence. As always, folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And um, don't forget, you can subscribe. I post on this channel every Friday at 12.30 GMT time. And until next time, farewell.